always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, this literally does not work. And welcome to the Dallas Cowboys Evening Report. I know we're knee deep in the middle of the offseason. There's not a whole lot to report, but then again, this is the Dallas Cowboys, the biggest franchise in the world. There's always something to talk about. There's always some drama. There's always, should we get that guy? There's always a Jerry Jones quote out there. There's always something to do. And besides, it's Sunday afternoon. Where else are you going to be? So let's get to it. You know, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny that I had did my morning report this morning because, and you guys don't seem to understand, satire. Satire is kind of like comedy, okay? You're kind of making fun of a situation, okay? When it comes to a lot of Cowboy fans, we will always go through and say, go get that guy. And, and the media themselves, whenever there is a player available, they'll say, well, the Dallas Cowboys should get that because they know that people will click. And the bottom line is, it doesn't matter by hook or crook how you get people to click or why they get you to click. The bottom line is you clicked. So whenever anybody comes available, you know, we heard, oh, Deshaun Watson, he might be traded. The Cowboys should trade for Deshaun Watson. Of course, when, you know, um, Aaron Rodgers drama, the Cowboys should try and get Aaron Rodgers. You'll see pictures of Aaron Rodgers and Cowboys gear and stuff, just like Russell Wilson. And the reality is the Cowboys aren't interested. They're not. But it's always great to talk about. So this morning, I was doing some satire when I was saying the Dallas Cowboys should trade Michael Gallup for Julio Jones. And I said, because you know, that's the talk that'll go around. You'll have people that are saying, oh, he'd look good in Cowboys gear. I was basically going through <clears throat> excuse me, and saying, or foreshadowing, another lyrical term, um, Lyrical, no, not lyrical, not lyrical. Uh, English term, I don't know, you, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Here it is, Pro, the boys at Pro Football Focus, you see right here. Potential Cowboys offense. Potential? Dak Prescott, Zeke Elliott, Julio Jones, Amari Cooper, and CeeDee Lamb. Don't see Michael Gallup there, do you? Hmm, wow, okay. So that was my foreshadowing for this morning. And I had a person who just got, you know, went, went off on me, you know, uh, just literally went off on me. You know, you're full of crap. And blah. It's like, really, dude, really? Anyway, let's get on to some other news, some other interesting news. The Dallas Cowboys get a lot of grief and a lot of it is warranted. Um, but they very seldom get credit for doing something right. Now, we know last year was a disaster, but you have to at least look for some of the positives. The fact that we're sitting here looking at the Cowboys' potential offense with CeeDee Lamb, which, you know, some people uh, really, really wanted, Philly 500, um, you look at that and say the Cowboys made a good move in getting CeeDee Lamb. But you can also look through that whole draft and say that was a really good draft, much like the 2016 draft was. And in the end, you can't win unless you get players, and you have to keep being able to replenish the supply. One of the other players here, and I'm hoping that you know we have lightning strike in a bottle twice this year with Kevin Joseph, but we have to actually start looking at Diggs. The amazing thing, and, and I want to go through another thing for Pro Football Focus, and this is um, another one of those things that you can kind of say that, you know, statistics can, you know, you can prove anything you want with statistics. So they went through here on Pro Football Focus, and what they did was they broke down Diggs' man coverage versus his own coverage splits. Okay, so. Diggs, of course, you know, ended up having an injury and he came back. And when he came back, he ended up playing night and day better. And you could say the same thing actually happened with Anthony Brown. His rookie year, his first half of the season, he was terrible. But after the second half of the season, he actually rated out as one of the best corners uh, of that season. Now, let's hope it can translate some more. But if you go through his 113 snaps in a zone, in, I'm sorry, in man coverage, he allowed. 15 receptions on 22 targets for 214 yards. 
which he gave up two TDs and a 129.7 rating. That's not real good. But if you go through his zone coverage, he allowed 26 receptions on 47 targets for 470 yards, um, two TDs, 71.9 rating, seven, you know, three interceptions. So he actually played a lot better in zone coverage. Okay, so you look at that and say, eh, that's actually not that great. Um, he did only allow 71% passing rating, but he was definitely better in the zone. Now, let's go through here. Another thing, this is where you're kind of like, well, wait a minute, what are you telling me, Pro Football Focus? Diggs, between week 7 through 17, his coverage grade, 83.4, ranked first among all rookie cornerbacks. Wait a minute. Didn't you kind of trash him on the other? Okay. His interceptions and uh, PBUs, 10, ranked first. Completion percentage allowed. 58.8, which ranked third. So what you're sitting here looking at is is the second half of the season being the best rookie cornerback out there. That's actually pretty good. But when you look at the other part and you saw 129% QBR in man coverage, you say, that's ass. Well, yeah, if you take the whole picture, but if you look at where he's trending, he's actually trending and playing really, really well. And hopefully now with Dan Quinn and the crew that they're able to take him to another level and hope that we can get the same kind of production out of Kevin Joseph. Now, to put this in perspective, his three interceptions last year, his three interceptions last year, Byron Jones had two his whole time in Dallas. Let me say that one more time. Byron Jones had only two in his whole career with Dallas. He only has four in his career total. It's not too bad. So I like Diggs and what we got. And the thing that's kind of amazing is that was kind of quiet with what Diggs was doing um, as far as his numbers and things. He didn't really get as much love and publicity on that, but quietly actually had a really good season. Um, in other news, this is actually interesting because Rich Eisen, I got to tell you, I, I like Rich Eisen's show because Rich Eisen, you know, he's, he's much like me. He's getting older. He doesn't really have time for that much drama. And um, I like the way he kind of kind of rolls with the show. So they're talking about the Dallas Cowboys and what will their record be. Well, let's let's take it. Listen, TJ, you've lost your mind, Jefferson. How in the world do you think you're going to beat my Buccaneers Week One? That's a true story. Celebrating a Super Bowl victory. Wait, if, if you if you pay Pretty attention, Pete, I, I went back and I changed that about no, ten. No, you said to change one no, of the you two. Went back and said yeah, one I said and one. You went back and said we'll go one and one against us and the Chargers. You're going to go zero and two, buddy. We're not going zero and two. I have I have an L written here in the first spot, which okay. you can't see, and I have a W written in the second okay. spot. Okay, so L to Tampa. So L to Tampa, and then out here and against Los Angeles Chargers. A dub. Well, I mean, okay, and a then dub. And no, a, a, a dub. I, I love I love your fandom. Well, it's he's got that fandom. ripping off six straight wins against the Chargers, Eagles, Panthers, Giants, <laughs> Patriots, and Vikings. <laughs> Yeah, what's wrong with that? You had your record. Re- you got to reverse the record. You're going to be like six and eleven. Come on, no, no, no that that, that Chris think... Cut has never had a losing season. Thank Hold you. on a second. Tend to forget about All that. Right, Pete, you want to? Uh, uh, thank you for the call, Pete. Listen to this. I, one I'm, I'm not he, thinking. No, no, here, no. I will thank him for the call. <laughs> can can I, I don't, can can we get some NFL films music here? And can you please? Uh, Hoskins, put the Cowboys um, let's, up let's, there let's one more time, will you please? The Cowboy record, because I want to take my crack at this. Okay. Here we go. Pretty I say they lose. Good. I say they lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, okay. and I'll say I'll give them a win out here. I'll give them a win out here. I'll give them a win at home against the Eagles, and I'm gonna have them um, beating the Panthers. Okay. And I'll have them beating the Giants. I've got you. I'm with you right there. I I think you lose to the Patriots. I think you're four and two. I think the Patriots are going to be better than you think. I think so. And I think they're going to be out there, um, you know, uh, late window, CBS. And I think the whole country is going to watch. And I think think you're going to lose that. You're going to go on a bye. Then you'll come out and then you'll beat the Vikings. 
I think you beat the Broncos. Mm-hmm. Unless they have Aaron Rodgers. I, no. I, I, yeah, I think, but I'm not putting him there. Rich, we are right I, on and then, Hold on a second. And then I have you beating the Falcons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and two. Then I have you losing to the Chiefs. Then I have you uh, beating the Raiders. So that's now eight and three. I have you eight and four after losing to the Saints. I have you eight and five after losing to the Washington football team. And then I have you um, beating the Giants again. I think you're going to sweep them. I don't know. Um, the Giants I'm concerned about this year. What What is that record now? What have we got now? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine and one, two, three, five. four, five. Nine and five. Nine and five. I have you um, uh, losing to the Washington football team because I think you're going to lose a division. Twice. Nine and six. I have you uh, beating the Philadelphia Eagles. Ten and six. And then I have you uh, beating the Arizona Cardinals. And then I have you um, losing the Philadelphia Eagles. I got you ten and seven. So we're one game off. We're one game off. So why am I... Because you, because you, because the, your wins and losses, you're just saying, I, I know we're going to lose one, so I'm going to give it here. Like, but we came up with the same yeah, record but, almost. But we got, to the, we got to the, we got there differently. It's like a math problem, TJ. Oh my gosh. It's like in high school. Show your work. Well, I got the right answer. Yeah, but how'd you get there? Chris, we had one game different. I know, but it was the games that you had different that are. The oh, thing is, why? because it's improbable that we could beat the New England Patriots. Let's just at least. Let's just at least. Come to this conclusion. I'm not. The Cowboys not start. No, the Cowboys start house of fire. They start hot, and then they second half hot. of the season, we wonder if they're the real deal. I think they get in the playoffs as a wild card. I think Washington football team wins the division, and that's all plausible and you know very reasonable yes. as an outsider to look at that and say, yeah, I would expect the Cowboys to make the playoffs. Do I expect you to go 12 and five? No, nah, not really. I said 11 and 6, so he said 10 and 7. Yeah, That's but right. then in the commercial break, you're like, I'm going to come back and say we're going well, 13 and 4. Well, if we're going to talk, <laughs> if we're going to bring the light to things we say during the commercial break, do we want to start doing that now? Because I don't think anyone wants that. Nope. Definitely not. <laughs> okay, Definitely. then. All right, so they kind of lost it there at the end. Um, that, that's kind of interesting. So he's thinking that the Cowboys will be ten and seven. So we think that Washington's going to be like eleven and six or twelve and five. Really? Hmm. That's going to be kind of interesting because I, uh, you know, what we'll, we'll we'll deal with that in a little bit later. But either way, to say that the Cowboys are going to be six and eleven, uh, guys, they won six games last year without their offensive line, without their quarterback in a defense that was absolutely in shambles. And I still am kind of lost on this whole love fest of the Washington football team that all of a sudden we think that that 7-9 and nine team is a juggernaut. I hate to tell you, the NFC East will eat you up the next year after winning it. But then again, what do I know? I'm sitting here broadcasting from my backyard with freaking cicadas out here, you know? Yeah. I'm Mark Holmes, and you know the deal. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing. To they say they're edible. I might just have to try one of these one of these times. I'll see you later. <laughs>